the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. This is the Sunday, March 28th, 2021 weekly recap for the Sports Vote Campaign. So first, uh, there is a piece on Goldman bankers burning out like never before. I would say, yeah, uh, greed is very exhausting. About 70% of the traffic level um, on the 210 here at Pasadena, it's at about 70% of the um, normal traffic level that I observed prior to the pandemic. I think this is a pretty good indicator uh, of where the economy is. Maybe add another five points for uh, people that continue to work from home. I do know that most people are, are traveling now to their offices or traveling for their jobs. So I don't think that that is... Uh, you know, that there's a huge adjustment because of the work from home, uh, especially here in Los Angeles where people have to go to their uh, locations. You know, it's, a, it's the movie business and so forth is based upon people going to various locations. So uh, I would put the economy at about 70 to 75 percent of, of normal here, which probably means that outside of the coastal cities, it's uh, it's even less than that. Uh, DraftKings founders pocketed $600 million last year of a $1 billion loss. They lost about a billion dollars in 2020, but yet the founders managed to take out about 60% of that and put it in their pocket. That sounds like a scam to me if I've ever heard one. Um, this whole SPAC thing, um, it would have never happened if it wasn't for that. And I would also say that the uh, 1961 Wire Act 60-year-old super president was not only Restated recently, but uh, is fully in force. So regulators, do your damn jobs. Bitcoin is using more energy than American Airlines. And with every $1 billion in new inflows, it's the equivalent of putting 1.2 million cars on the road. Uh, this is not good. Uh, this is a whole other aspect of this that I really never considered, um, the whole green energy side of it. But this is ridiculous, what's being allowed to grow out of control here. I want to go back again to the roughly $1.5 million spent over the last five years uh, putting ASM back together after the uh, crash of 2008 and then about five years of nothing. Um, draft, that's about the judge's a federal appellate or a superior court uh, judge salary, uh, which is, you know, just to put it in perspective, the price of one man doing a job. And DraftKings loses about $4 million a day on what's basically an illegal scam, which apparently nobody seems to care uh, that it's a scam. Either we have laws or we don't have laws. We need to make up our damn minds on this. Um, and I really wonder if people know right from wrong anymore. It certainly doesn't seem like it. Apple is now worth more than basically the country of Saudi Arabia, which if monetized is the Saudi Aramco. Um, I think the really the statement there is that tech is uh, more valuable than petroleum, which I would agree. Sand, sand is more uh, valuable than uh, than oil. So sand, silicon. So um, I said that when the crash of this period, the coronavirus pandemic happened about a year ago, that it would cost uh, about one year of GDP in recovery money, meaning that we'll have to borrow it or print it. Which, by the way, this should have never happened. If you back the tape up, you're going to find that we cut funding um, on exactly this topic. Bill Gates has talked about this. This was this should have never happened. This is the result of being short-sighted, stupid, and greedy. And so we're going to have to basically print our way out of or borrow our way of, of one year's worth of GDP. And we're getting close. Uh, if you tally up the programs, it looks like we're at about half now. Uh, there's a lot of unaccounted liabilities that are going to be showing up in the books pretty soon. Uh, at the end of the day, when the look back is done, you're going to find that it almost exactly matches um, our one-year GDP for the year uh, 2019. So just uh, mark this and remember that I said it. Uh, put it out here for all of eternity. This will be the case. So people are getting ahead of themselves again on the recovery 2021 is not going to be the recovery. Stop being so damn impatient. That's why we get into these traps. Uh, it's going to start in 2022. That's that's the starting point, and it's going to take a long time to get out of this all the way because we lost essentially half of our economy in 30 days. So patience, patience. We It's going to take time to rebuild this correctly. Um, it Things crash much faster than they rebuild. So on March 22nd, 
Our uh, motion to dismiss the SEC case was denied. Uh, this is not unexpected. This almost never happens, but you always try uh, a dismissal motion. I mean, if you look at any court case in the public domain, especially high-profile ones, you're going to see that that's the first move. It's always the first move. So um, Alper is working uh, with a former uh, USFE attorney, a guy that I know quite well. He's very familiar with the case. He's very familiar with us. He's given us some terms to work on the case, which are extremely reasonable and that we can afford. So it is likely that we're going to retain him to work out a settlement um, with the SEC on this matter. But it's still too early to get any, any further than that. I've also received a few uh, new leads from a Hero Club contact. That person would probably act as support. Um, I want this gentleman from USFE to, to remind you who that is. That's the uh, the entity that we had the listing agreement with for the for the SRI futures contracts right before the crash of 2008. So he knows us. He knows actually the details of the case because we discussed it with him uh, 18 months ago or whenever it was uh, filed. I think it's a little longer than that now. Um, so he's familiar with us. He knows me. I, I dealt with him quite a bit. And so um, he's given us some terms, and those terms are uh, doable. So it is uh, very likely that he will be retained uh, in this case for us at some point in the, in the near future. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reported that the uh, ERISX, I don't know how they pronounce this, I'm not going to try, um, NFL futures were uh, denied. This is a very good thing. Uh, we commented extensively on this application to, to not allow this to happen. This is, again, trying to turn everything into a mishmash where Wall Street is a gamble and, and gambling is a is legitimate investment. This is trying to confuse the public. Um, the basis for rejecting it really has more to do with the NFL and the other participants not really having a say in it. This is a throwback to the movie box office contracts from about 10 years ago um, where we I actually spoke with uh, the CEO after they, they got deep-sixed on the movie box office contracts. Um, Rich Jacobs, I believe is his name. Uh, and they didn't get participation or buy-in from the uh, movie industry before they went forward with it, so that's how it died. This is good. We don't want the stock markets being mishmashed with the betting markets. And we I'm, it's almost a certainty that we had a hand in this because we had the most extensive comment on the uh, uh, thoughtful and extensive comment on the subject uh, to the regulators. So that's good. They've been turned down. That They'll come back and try again. There's no question. But at least for now, it's dead. The good news is that sports markets are now on the map. The idea is on the map. So this is uh, important in advancing our mission. So uh, system-wide trust is at an all-time low. I remember when I first moved to Costa Rica, I was astounded by a few things, you know, bars and things on the windows. Obviously, that's, that's an indication of security problems. But more how strained every uh, contract was, every transaction. It was just lots of paper, lots of, it just the, the tons of friction. And I didn't really understand what that meant at the time, but now I know it to mean that there's not much trust and that's why you have so much strain. And I'm seeing the same thing happen in the States here now, um, in the U.S., uh, like that. It's it's not quite that bad, but it's headed that direction. Um, my business history, the, the time I recall where things were really smooth and easy was in the 1990s. Believe it or not, the Bill Clinton years, and I was not a Clinton supporter. I was actually a registered uh, Republican or maybe an independent. I voted for Ross Perot in 1992 believe it or not. So, uh, it, but the, the reality is that that was the best economic climate that I've ever seen. And it was so easy to do business. I never even took credit applications from my customers. Uh, we had large contracts with, with, I mean, you know, $100,000 worth of gear, never took a credit application. And over the course of 10 years, we only had like one or two small checks that, uh, were un were uncollectible. I, that's an unthinkable thing now. I mean, uh, you, you, you have, 15 pages of a contract for an item that cost $100. It's just incredible. It's really sad, actually. Um, System-wide trust is declining, no question. Uh, we're growing organically, the trader base, at about 3 to 9 per day, uh, traders per day. I'm not sure where this is coming from. It's not really important. It's just the fact that it does continue to grow all by itself is important. Um, okay, so again, i keep got to keep stating this over and again. We just need one single example 
of uh, funding an actual sports league or an esports league uh, to bring all this uh, home, to make this whole thing pay off. And again, more than $100 million has been spent on failed, bus- on failed business models and market models trying to steal our concept. Not a single one has worked. Not even close. It hasn't even come close uh, to what we've done. So just one example. If you have a league, if you know of a league, um, whether it's virtual sports, esports, or regular physical sports, please do drop us a line at uh, help at allsportsmarket.com and let's see if we can put it together. So I'm seeing growing complaints about uh, providing personal and tax information to DraftKings. I just would like to remind you what I said about Costa Rica and UK markets, especially Costa Rica, because their main advantage is uh, transacting without reporting to government agencies. And I'm actually seeing this start to spill over into public comments and complaints by by, uh, customers. So this is an impediment, okay? The market doesn't care whether you're regulated or not. The market cares whether they get the best price. And in the case of gambling, once again, most people are not proud of this. They don't want to know, be known publicly for it, and they don't want to report it to the taxing authorities. Remember that at this point in time, it is still federally illegal to gamble, okay? <laughs> I understand that the PASPA thing is, is reversed, but that's not the whole story. All that, that is not the whole story. The 1961 Wire Act is still in place. So I imagine there's some hesitation there because you're essentially admitting to an illegal activity. And I continue to fill out public um, grant, you know, base, basically some of these recovery funds from coronavirus um, might be applicable for us. So I continue to fill out applications to try to get funding in for us. And without exception, when there's federal funds involved, which all of these have federal funds as a component, you're asked three questions in every single application, no exceptions. Number one, are you involved in the marijuana business? Why is that a question? Because it's still illegal at the federal level. Are you involved in the gambling business? Why, why is that question being asked? Because it's still illegal at the federal level. And then are you absor- involved in the uh, pornography business? Which is, that one surprised me. Um, and that's because actually there still is a federal statute regarding uh doing business in some, it's indecency or something. I don't exactly understand how that works, but believe it or not, those three three things at the federal level are still black letter illegal. Okay, so that's why you get asked those questions on grant forms. So um, there's another slander lawsuit. This time it's uh, Fox News against Fox News. That's a big one, $1.6 billion. It seems to be the same number every time. So they're coming up with that from somewhere. So the days of just being able to slander people in the public domain and and not to have any consequences, tick tock, tick tock. That's all I'm going to say there. So we work another scam. I mean, unbelievable scam. Looking at going public via uh, SPAC. So hello, regulators. Hello, hello. Are you going to do your job here? So Ray Dalio, wealthy money manager, is talking about Bitcoin being outlawed because it's competition for national currencies. I don't know how many times I've said that, but this is the first time I've seen somebody with a big footprint come out and say the same thing, so don't be surprised. And before you say they can't do that, you bet your ass they can do that. All they have to do is make it a line item rider on a bill that says something to the effect of any trading of cryptocurrencies in and out of the U.S. dollar is a federally illegal publish, uh, punished by XX number of dollars in fines and or YY number of years in jail. The end. Okay, so NFT, uh, more nonsense on top of nonsense on top of nonsense, uh, bubbling up a little bit, trying to get some traction. Everybody that's talking about it is a vested insider, so it's just talk in your book. Um, garbage, 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 and more garbage. Uh, we started t- uh, talking, um, sorry, we stopped taking direct market contributions into the ASM uh, pilot market uh, a little over two years ago. This was on our own initiative. It predates any filing of the SEC case or even our understanding of what the specific issues were when I was answering their questions, which I'm going to say this again and again and again. I was told to not discuss the matter, so I didn't. Okay, so the lawsuit was a surprise. It was not something that I knew was going to take place. Um, I didn't even understand the full scope of what the complaint was, The complaint is not, again, nothing whatsoever to do with the actual sports shares, okay? Lies, 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 and more lies in the public domain about that. That's just simply not true. It had nothing to do with bonus margin, had nothing to do with the pilot market. Again, we had a no action request. We, it's now over five years old, okay? They asked me to take that off the website long before I 
knew there was even a lawsuit coming. I didn't know because it's a different department in the SEC. So they asked me to take it off the website, which I did, at, not knowing why. And then it was basically to cover their ass. Well, and that's why this case is never going to fly in a trial. Okay, there's no jury that's ever going to understand that sequence of events because that did happen on top of a bunch of other things. Um, so anyhow, uh, we stopped taking direct market contributions about, about two years ago on our own initiative. And I've been, we've been managing the payments, out payments uh, to non-stakeholders, uh, people that don't have any company stock uh, grants or anything like that. Um, we've been paying out over the last two years, and it's come down to literally uh, a tiny trickle. So we're go- we need to completely make this transition from uh, me to Alper and his team and part of that is part of the is legal and accounting and all that. So we've stopped the uh, in and out now. So this is not permanent. It's just suspended until the transition is complete, which is underway. We're working on this practically every day now. But in the meantime, no money in, no money out. Okay, so it's going to be frozen for for this period until this transition is done, and then we'll pull the uh, restrictions off. Um, you know, de- under some set of terms. That won't be my decision. That's going to be a decision up to Alper and his team. So um, if this information is useful to you um, or you think it might be useful to somebody else, please, pa- please pass it along. Uh, you know, refer it, review it if you're so inclined, and subscribe if you want to be notified. As I say every, every time, the uh, show notes will contain any uh, relevant details and all the current links to the resources. Thank you very much, and stay for your time and stay safe with your friends and family. Bye now.